Okay. Okay, it says simplify this expression as, as far as possible um, with x being equal to um, 8 secant. So let's go ahead and let's just do that. Let's just go ahead and plug x in. So we get 8 secant theta squared minus 64 all under the radical. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and write this in a little uh, uh, a better notation. And before, um, just, just to recall some algebra skills, remember that the uh, square or you know the cube or whatever exponent you have um, gets distributed inside of a multiplication problem. Okay, we have eight times secant squared. Okay, now on the side note, if this was eight plus secant squared, we could not do that. Okay, we could we cannot do that in that case. So, but this is a multiplication problem, so it's actually a, a little better. It uh, simpler. Um, we can go ahead and do that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to distribute the, ooh, bumped my whole stand. I'm going to distribute the whole thing in here. And that is going to give us um, 64 secant squared theta minus 64 all under the radical. Now, um, that's, that's, that's even better because notice how within our radical I've got, I can factor the 64 out and multiply it by secant, uh, theta, secant squared theta minus one. So, so just watch me real quick, watch me do this. I'm gonna pull out 64, okay, and that's gonna be secant squared theta minus one. All under the radical, don't forget that. Because remember, I can distribute the 64 back in there and I ended up with this thing back here, okay? Um, secant, uh, secant, Square or secant squared minus one. Um, I don't. I don't have it memorized what that equals. So I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna write my Pythagorean uh, identity equals one, and I'm looking for secant right here. So it looks like I can get secant if I divide everything by cos, cos uh, cosine squared. See, this will give me secant. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. All right, um, this is going to be a tangent theta. This is going to be 1 equals secant of theta. And I'm, I'm looking for secant squared minus 1, so I'll just subtract 1. And it looks like I'm left with tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta minus 1. Okay, all this work right here was just a, a little side note, okay? Just to find out what secant minus one is. Secant squared minus one is equal to tangent theta, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plug, I'm gonna plug that in, okay? So that's gonna equal 64 tangent theta squared, okay? I'm gonna go to the next page right here, and I'm gonna write 64 tangent squared theta under the radical, and I'm also gonna remember that x was equal to secant theta. Okay, that's where I start. So now I got 64 tangent squared of theta. And these are actually both squares, and remember that, you know, x squared, remember from algebra that that's, that's um, x squared, um, take, Taken to the uh, one uh, the square the square root of x squared. I'm sorry, I'm getting confusing. Is equal to absolute value of x. Um, my camera keeps going out of focus. What's going on here? Okay. So all right, we got that. So let's take a 64. Okay, and this is going to be eight squared. Okay, um, this is just going to be eight times, okay, eight times the absolute value of tangent theta because remember we take the, we take the square root of a square, they kind of cancel each other out. So that's how this thing goes. Um, yeah, so um, one other thing I think I'm going to do, though, before we 
uh, go on is we have an answer in terms of theta. And if you remember, here was our original function. It was x squared. It was, it was f of x. We have f of theta right now. So let's see what we can do here. And just remember that x was equal to secant of theta. So 8 times secant of theta. So what is secant of theta right here? Okay. Um, secant of theta is... That's equal to 8 over cosine theta, isn't it? Okay. That's all, that's all I'm doing right now. I, I, have a, I have my answer, and that's, that's okay, but I want to rewrite it in terms of x instead of uh, theta. So I'm just going to draw the triangle uh, to kind of do that. Okay, I'm going to do that here, and I'm going to get a thinner pen uh, as well. That, that way um, everything else gets better. Okay, so here, here we go. And it looks like x is equal to 8 over cosine theta. All right, so let's see here. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse right here. So let me, uh, let me go back up to x equals 8 secant theta. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, divide both sides by 8. That gives me secant theta equals x over 8. Um, secant theta is the same thing as 1 over over uh, theta, where secant theta, I'm sorry, is 1 over cosine theta. So 1 over secant theta should equal cosine theta, right? Which would equal 8 over x. You see how I did that? I just divided both sides by 8, and I got secant equals x over 8, so cosine has to equal 8 over x, since they're reciprocal identity. So cosine of theta is 8 over x. Cosine of theta is 8 over x, okay? And I have tangent of theta. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do the Pythagorean theorem, okay? I've got 8 squared plus b squared equals x squared, okay? All right, that's what I got there. So if I subtract 8 squared from both sides, I get b equals the square root of x squared minus 64. Okay, so this, this is what my other side is. This side over here ends up being x squared minus 64 under the radical. This is, I didn't plan on doing this simplification, so maybe I will, um, maybe I'll um, simplify it in the next video. So it's getting kind of messy right now. Um, let's see here. So I got um, my other side being equal to that. So, and I want a tangent theta, and that's gonna be equal to TOA, which is opposite over adjacent, which is, What do you got right there? Okay. Um, I, I thought everything went kind of, you know, smooth until the end. Um, so I'm going to do another, I'm going to do another video of this. Okay. I'm going to do another one. All right.